Okay, uh, I'm in the process of uh, rebuilding the air variable capacitor, the four gang uh, cap, broadcast cap they call it, and it's the load capacitor for this homebrew uh, 2x813 amp that I was given. So it was pretty uh, nasty and corroded. You can see down in here, it uh, might have been from the fire extinguisher dust or otherwise, but it was uh, pretty corroded. This copper shield was all uh, nasty and corroded, but I got all this cleaned up and polished up the other day. Uh, some residual corrosion had eaten off the copper, but it's clean. But the capacitor itself was a mess, so I uh, took it all apart uh, painstakingly at that, and I got all of these stator sections out. And I cleaned those up with Tarnex and polished them up with cotton cloth uh, as best I could. Uh, reassembling them uh, turned out to be quite the challenge. Uh, putting these bolts in and getting it lined up was a real bear. So I spent most of the afternoon and early evening getting two of the four sections done. And you can see here. Uh, and setting them up is a challenge because these uh, stators... Screws, they can change azimuth, they can change height, elevation, side to side. So there's a lot of little adjustments. Uh, so if you if you think you get the plates lined up up top here, they might be different on the bottom, might be different on the left side. So it's it's a quite a bit of adjustments. You have to loosen the bolts on each side and tap them and tweak them and so on and so forth. So I think I got uh, really good alignment on these two. Uh, but the other thing is to really test it. You have to make sure that these plates aren't shorted. Obviously, you can do that with the uh, ohmmeter or voltmeter. But you also want to test them for uh, some sort of a voltage to see if they can withstand some voltage. Because there's some of these clearances get really close in here. So idealistically, I would high pot this. But my high pot tester's in the garage. But it's pretty brute force. It's uh, about 6.5 kV. I don't know if I can turn it down much lower. Uh, typically... A loading capacitor shouldn't see that much voltage because it's across your antenna output of the amplifier uh, which is a low impedance should be that 50 ohms if you're not trying to tune something or, or run into a load that's got a high SWR but general rule of thumb I guess <clears throat> if you do have a high SWR you could see a few hundred volts on the antenna lead which this uh, capacitor is across so I thought I would fashion up some sort of a power supply to get about 300 volts and I uh, thought, well, geez, how can I do that? Well, it turns out I have some uh, whole bunch of these surplus transformers I got. I believe I bought these out of Vetco in Bellevue years ago, almost 20 years ago. They're really nice uh, transformers. They're uh, 110 volt and it's a 12.6 volt center tap, thereabouts. Uh, they make for great power supply transformers. I've done them in project boxes for the various projects I've done. You can put a, a center tap fully rectifier bridge on there, LM. 7812, 7905, makes for really nice uh, small power supplies. Uh, it's probably good for 750 mils on the secondary, uh, probably more like 500 mils. It's kind of a wall war transformer. Anyway, I thought I'd put together an auto transformer. So I have all of the secondaries minus the center tap in parallel. All four transformers have our secondaries tied together. And I'm bringing in 110 volts, 120 volts through a suicide plug. It's a line cord with alligator clips, and I feed the first uh, winding there, first primary, and then have all the primaries in series, and uh, they stagger on the pins because you want to keep the winding direction the same. So it comes in here, you have 110, 120 here, 240 here, plus another 120, another 120. Technically, you should have 480 volts across this uh, for the primary. Although it's a little bit less than that, there might be some losses in the auto transformer somehow. But, uh, and then I wanted to limit the current on the output. So if I detected a short, I wanted a visual indication. And that's where the neon uh, lamp comes from, neon, neon bulb. These are really cool, I really like these. Uh, you can set them up so that uh, they typically have a breakover voltage about 65 volts. They draw very little current, about two milliamps or so. Uh, so I thought this would be a really good indicator for my 480 volts to see if I have a, a short across these plates. Because at this current, this low current, I won't see it spark when I move this to check for shorts. So this way I can just visually check the neon bulb, neon lamp. So uh, the neon lamp manual uh, has this as any 58 I think, a different base they show inside. And they show, oh, most neon bulbs have about a 65 volt breakdown voltage. Uh, 
current's about two milliamps. You do the math on 480 volts, and basically it comes out to be about a 200k ohm resistor in series with it. It's not very critical. I don't have a, a 207k, I should say. I have 180k close enough. So I put that in series. That's what this is here. So there's 480 volts, or there are about 440 volts coming through here, the lamp. The limiting resistor for the neon bulb and then the output's going to go to each gang of this and we're going to check for shorts. So here we go. Let's go ahead and plug her in. Uh, we'll find a suicide plug here and we'll just plug that into the outlet here very carefully and see what happens here. Okay, bam. So let's see what I have here. Uh, so let's measure the voltage and see what we got here. Uh, what are we looking at here? So cross the line. Let's see what we got here. So, okay, we don't have 480 volts, so we have 443 volts AC. Close enough. So, not sure why that is, but that's okay. So then we'll take this off here. We don't really need to measure voltage anymore, but I will measure across the, the neon lamp just in case. So what we're going to do, because it's pretty bright, if there's any leakage at all, uh, we'll see it on this neon lamp neon bulb so we'll kind of turn the lights down a little bit and we'll start closing the I have two gangs put in like I said I have uh, two more to go so we're gonna see how I do with uh, one gang I don't have them in parallel yet we're gonna go gang by gang so here we go we're gonna start closing it and uh, interesting uh, thing here is when I start closing I actually do see the lamp the neon bulb glow lamp start to light a little bit and we'll talk about that in a bit uh, but I don't see any leaking. If there was any short, I would see it blink on full brilliance. Or full, full brilliance for the 2 milliamps at 65 volts that they talk about in the manual. And let's take a look what that looks like. I should have uh, showed you that before. Let me take this off. We're going to simulate a dead short so we can see the lamp. That boom. So there's the neon bulb. You can see it under the light. It's got kind of a glow to it here. Uh, and that's what it looks like on a dead short. So I, would, I was thinking that if, uh, as I move the stator and stuff, I would see that sparking like that if there's a short. So I didn't see any short. So let's go back and do the first gang again. I'm going to turn off the light again. Turn it off. And open. I don't see anything. Oh, and I have an insulator here. This isn't the insulator for this capacitor. This uh, coupling, insulated coupling, is actually for my roller inductor. But I want a way to insulate it because I don't want to touch that shaft with 400 and some odd volts. But I am on a carpet, so I should be okay. But just in case, a little safety precaution. So I screwed that on there just as a way to actuate this air variable without getting shocked. So as we turn it down, as we talked about, you see it starting to, to glow that lamp. It's nice and smooth. I don't not see any shorts whatsoever. But we are seeing some brilliance. And so what I think that brilliance, or what I believe that brilliance to be, is uh, <clears throat> is the capacitance. So X of C. So we have some reactants here. Even though it's extremely high, uh, I measured these. And each one of these sections is about 480 picofarads. Anywhere from 365 to 480. That's pretty typical for a single gang on a broadcast capacitor. So uh, if you do the math, if you consider X of C, which is a resistance, reactance, of being 1 over 2 pi FC, with uh, the capacitor being really, really high, 480 puffs, I actually got my calculator on my iPhone for work, ran the numbers, ran the math, it actually comes out to 5.5 .5 mega ohm. So it's conceivable that 500 mega ohm leakage would cause that kind of a brilliance. I mean, we could s simulate that. I could put a 500 meg resistor in here, or 500 meg, 5 meg, 5.5 meg, with my decade box, and I would probably see that same amount of uh, current that makes that kind of brilliance on that, because it is uh, energizing the bulb, because you see the bulb is about 58 volts across it. The manual says it actually fires at about 65 volts and requires 60 volts to maintain it. So this isn't like fully illuminated. Although it looks like in here because it's really dark, but I'm looking at it in real life and it's barely, barely got any brilliance. Just kind of an orange fuzz around the, the two elements there. <clears throat> so that's probably indicative of about 5 megs that and then through the uh, 180K that I already have in here. here. So 
Anyway, just thought I'd share that with you folks. It seems like it's working really good. Yeah, I'll work on the other two sections and talk to you later.